This first piece was born out of my obsession with world geography and America's relentless cognitive dissonance around race. The exact location of Africa. Maybe you didn't notice the loose dangle of my whiteness. This suit I never saved up to buy. Easy pass requiring neither registration nor replenishment. Because your mental inseam ripped forth such a comment, a hot whistling stitch to drop like barbecue mesquite, like a dance caller drunk on fiddles and beer, your words came and went before arrival, something about the country, Africa, like Greece or Peru, France or Bhutan, and maybe you caught me on the wrong day, or maybe I'm just tired of complicity, but that's basic geography, man. First grade stuff like shapes and addition, right before the unit on hate. So I'll be the one today to unbuckle my mouth and ask, which Africa did you mean? Was it the Cape Town surfer tying his dreads up for lunch? Brothers breaking bread in a Tripoli breezeway? Fruit stand grandmas on the road to Kilimanjaro? The illuminated pre-Da Vinci libraries of Timbuktu? Tulips sobbing at Lumumba's grave? Maybe you meant the stunned limestone of Sierra Leone slave docks, Boer War battlegrounds, the Belgian chapter on lip and nose hierarchy. Was it the Senegalese bicycle mechanic, the Nigerian surgeon scrubbing out to catch his daughter's recital? Please, tell me it wasn't Joseph Conrad's Congolese pit of human conscience, that dark, dead-on-arrival, machete-sharp lie of primitivism. Or could it be you meant the Togolese mother's arthritic hands, knotted by decades of braiding? Ghana's hydroelectric plants, the Egyptian tour guide pregnant with her first, the Somalian waiter preoccupied with tonight's date, the Kenyan preteen dizzy with note cards, or the Tanzanian imam penning letters to his Long Island sweetheart. And if none of this is what you meant by Africa, try looking in the mirror. Flip the lid off your alabaster skull and scoop out whatever poverty, disease, and ignorance you find rotting there in the darkest, the very darkest continent of all. Thank you. Um, uh, people are, are either inspired or uh, induced um, to vomit by my relationship with my wife. Um, we don't take either one personally. Uh, so it's been you know 13 years and we're like newlyweds. And um, so this is a peek at, thank you. Uh, and there's, a, there's much greater currency in our culture to bash your spouse. Um, so I, I do my best to do the opposite. Um, but this is a peek at the beginning. It's called Dreamates. Uh, which is not a cheesy title, it's the name of the website where we met. Or <laughs> well, maybe it's both. <laughs> we met on the internet. Abstract code punched in rooms, straddling cables, toll booths, untold flavors of New York accent. People I am not sure were ever real sent me her profile. Want a strong woman? Here I am. And I did. I charged like a bullet a red cape, no matador but her fear to, hold it, to pull it back. It was too good. Too right, she gave up fighting. We met on the internet between Jesus and porn, Amazon and MySpace, met in Central Park, Toronto, inside phone lines, upside down midnights narrating novels of ourselves. We met on the internet, googled real fucking love and found our picture. Started with 100% match, they said, but we wanted 200% to nail down the loose boards of our pasts, our plans, our clarity, examined each other's dot com, each other's backslash, examined the basin of our freedom, leveled it with good soil. We met on the internet, but kissed in ancient mosques, forest bends, rocking A trains, made love in 31 states. Yes, I keep a list. Wrote poetry, wrote children, wrote dishes and laundry, and filled all the pots of mundanity with seeds of our meeting. We keep meeting, keep buffering, want each other more than ever, fiber optic stamina, billion bites per second. We meet and we meet, and every time meeting is prayer, is God in our bones and corn and fire and laughter that never seems to end like cells, mitosis, our hearts making children out of hours, cities out of weeks, continents out of years, the internet web of all things intersecting, meeting, her, me, here. Here's a parody poem. I teach 
poetry to 17, 18 year olds. They love slam, they love spoken words, so do I. Um, but sometimes you can be taken in by the style and you, it's, it's important to notice when there's no substance. Uh, so, <laughs> which is fun sometimes. So this is a parody poem, Broken Word Artist. <laughs> Here it comes. Turn the page, mudslide of verbiage. I know what the word is, and the word is, and the word is mine. Like your attention, shibboleth suspension of disbelief. I thief and dazzle, hassle you into invention. Magician misdirection, because I am not saying anything. <laughs> Scaffolds of sound building up across town, lost and found, hide me away behind towers of illusion. Call me Ishmael on bleaker, subterranean homesick delusion. Angels glistening in my Bermuda triangle of verse, and what's worse, I am not here, or there, or anywhere. I will not eat green eggs and ham, or write what could potentially or eventually bust your heart tonight. I'd rather still thrill and fill the dome of your head with constellations, planetarium installations of diction, friction from my lexical prescription that feeds the addiction of this narcissist pharmacist scared so shitless he paints palimpsest pictures as he slinks out a room, out a door, the coward's allure, he will dodge and hop, drops of gin, dope, skin rope, thin hope that next time maybe he'll be honest. This is me writing about writing, affect without affection, versifying like metric masturbation, dissertation, flagellation to break the quasi-tension like ellipses. Let me slip my dactyl under your diphthong, syncopate your syntax, pop your plosive, set forth a semiotic expletive, soiree of semantic expletive, excess, pusillanimous pyrotechnics in a voice that isn't mine. <laughs> Maybe my regurgitation of arcane parlance, obtuse riffs that joust with a sharp lance, castration of songs that could sing us half a chance, will mesmerize with rhythm and rhythm and rhythm of her class and his sass, one more glass and no gas to search or lurch or perch, just sit in the not knowingness the hot flowing list of now. Climb a ladder out this pit of construction and obstruction, mirage and sabotage, into the vernacular of real human struggle, where each word, like a tiger's first claws, cuts through the skin. We've all been there on the bike. Um, the co most common fears that people have are heights and closed spaces and spiders and bugs and clowns. Um, from the time I was a kid, it's always been guns. Uh, that just seems like it. Thank you. All right, right here. Um, on AR-15s. When you say the weapon isn't the issue, anyone who has ever loved is insulted. When you say a man could also slay 50 souls of infinite synaptic and experiential attraction with a rock or knife or handgun, anyone who has ever thought critically is insulted. I know this because I stood agape as two sons were born from my wife's miraculous body, stood over them eye to eye, wiping their soiled bodies clean, stood rocking them to sleep with knotted fabric and preternatural stamina, stood in the unwritten sea of their becoming, stood at the first arc of their vigorous, guileless trajectory, stood with a billion ineffable moments pounding like secret, opulent heartbeats, stood and listened to their questions and jokes, fears and worries as I reminisced of diaper-changing days, me the neophyte god above clouds of flailing limb and stink. So tell the mothers and fathers and spouses and soulmates in Aurora, Newtown, San Bernardino, Orlando, and tomorrow's spattered walls, it wasn't the AR-15 that stole the breath and promise and lips of their beloved. Tell them a rock or a crossbow would have done the trick as fast and deadly. Tell them you wish there'd been more guns at the scene. Tell them the old lie about good guys and bad guys, or the one about America being the only place smart enough to think assault rifles in the hands of citizens is in any way, shape, or form acceptable. Better yet, offer back 75% of all the mass shooting casualties. I'll give you 25%. Offer them back in a lottery to the mothers and fathers who changed their diapers and paused the spinning of the sky just to spill love into each of their soft and cataloged pores. You will see firsthand what sacrifice looks like, what love looks like, 
what desperation looks like, what humanity really looks like. Spoiler, there is no price they wouldn't pay. You didn't even know I wrote poetry. Um, short poem uh, about the incredibly low bar set for men and dads that I do try to lift a little bit, um, both through my teaching and in my family. Regiment of Fathers. Trumpet sirens in the mist. Alley stones and trash cans bent by moonlight. Where are all the fathers? Backs break at the lead bar so low. Expectations of boot tread and fleet feet, numb souls in flight. Where is the pheromone of stay, of listen, of cooing pupils as the diaper fastens? We are a regiment of lost men, raising double the children we have been appointed by fate to rear, and the ones stuck inside, holding our ribs like prison bars, waiting for the fathers we never had to appear. Thank you so much. And, and Terry and I do have books. Um, I have two books, Raven Wire and A Thousand Doors, Overexposed. Her book's amazing, so if you're going to buy one, buy hers. Um, and the anthology uh, of New York Women Poets, really great. And we have the square, in case you don't want to catch. You know, it's, artists, you know, we're, we're supposed to do the free thing, but it, unfortunately you can't. Um, we started in Africa. We're going to end in Mexico. Mexico nights are so black, and thanks for your attention. Mexico nights are so black, and Orion lies on his side, unlike New York, where he is vigilant, upright. The palm fronds wave, Diplodocus chewing at trunks by building six. Dinosaurs never heard a human tongue. We practice our second here where the sea is weightless, El Mar Caribe. The words feel lighter, alter current of neural stream. Corazón shifts atria of memory, the melody of heat starry air in a black throat, we climb down past Spanish signs into cenotes, vines and bats, the black catfish, small openings where beams scream through like spotlights, sacred path to the mother. On through Las Aldeas, clotted with plastic bags, florid murals and handsome policia posturing at entrados y salidas like sunglassed celebrities, bookending barefoot children and toothless abuelos in tank tops selling cocos fríos. Their ancestors never heard a Spanish tongue. Difíciles de la vida, yet a niña rides the back of her papa's bicycle five meters from town, past the sisal field and runt-eyed vultures, and he smiles, her hands so sweetly gripping his shirt, what happiness is, felicidades in the mouth comes and goes like Yucatan rain, spreads across Mayan land where hands still beat corn and weave henequen and remember all the many words for invasion. Thank you very much.